Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today there's actually a change of uh, of style or game. I'm instead of playing Crusader Kings, I picked up another uh, medieval um, era game. This one ba being Banner Lord or Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord. It's a uh, game I've uh, recently got into. I haven't played any other game in that series, so this is the first uh, of uh, game in that series that I play. I uh, am not an expert in that game, I admit. Um, but I do love the medieval style and it's just a fascinating uh, game. It's still in the early access uh, phase, uh, but I think there's loads of content to be able to, uh, you know, uh, that's already available in this version, in this current version, and they're constantly patching uh, more and more. And they, you know, the, uh, um, the developers are actually always releasing patch notes to give players an indication of how things are changing. So given that I'm just new to this and this has been around for a few months, uh, I don't know what the kind of earlier versions look like. So, uh, but th the current one is, I think, amazing. I mean, I uh, played a little bit in a, uh, I think the last game I played was an earlier patch and I didn't find any kind of major uh, issues at least but I didn't to be to admit it as well or t uh, to be absolutely honest or fair I haven't played uh, you know longer than 10 hours in a campaign or 11 hours uh, and I did play uh, just to kind of get an indication of how to you know play this game so when I do record I'm you know not kind of uh, absolutely lost you know uh, obviously I'm going to be discovering as I continue to expand and there are uh, things that are still underexplored. So I do apologize to those of you who are watching and, you know, uh, you see me kind of uh, playing sometimes and, you know, butchering the game. Uh, this is for me, for myself, still a learning experience. But the reason I want to play this game so badly is, first of all, twofold. It sticks to the kind of medieval era uh, games that I like and it's a period that I that I love. Obviously, I will be playing games in dis diff uh, different historical eras as well. So I'm not going to strictly stick to the medieval period, but this channel is primarily about video games set in the medieval context. Uh, so there's that, there's the historical context that interests me for you know personal uh, uh, nerdy reasons, you can say. And then the second reason is uh, that just the kind of genre is, is, is new to me and it's, it's amazing. So basically in principle, and you know you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but this game is namely a kind of uh, strategy RPG and First person kind of fighter game as well um, and uh, or it can be also from uh, the third person but you control a character and you're basically the leader of a band uh, that is uh, you know uh, basically meant to grow and then eventually I think you can become a sovereign of a, of, a, of a faction and then you grow and you have massive armies so you start from kind of scratch absolutely nothing the principle is really nice and it's in set in a kind of historical uh, fiction context, but the uh, different factions or cultures that exist here are representative of um, different, uh, uh, you know, or inspired by actual historical um, groups that did exist. So, in the first instance, you have the Vlandians. I'm not sure who they represent exactly. I think they might be some Iberian characters. I might be wrong. Uh, then you have the Styrgians, who are, you know, clearly kind of Norse or nor northern tribes. Uh, maybe in kind of northern Germanic. Uh, you have Empire, which I think strikes me as perhaps Byzantine or, you know, influenced by the Byzantines or perhaps even um, uh, uh, maybe the uh, the uh, the Romans as well. Uh, uh, or, you know, the uh, kind of the, the pre-medieval Romans, right, from antiquity. So I'm not sure, you know, so because sometimes the, these, these cultures or tribes are kind of abstractions of larger groups right uh, or large or many different groups uh, put together you have the Asari are clearly Arab nomadic or Arabian nomadic desert uh, dwellers who you know as you can see here it says that they're a mixture of nomadic Bedouin and settled oasis farmers clearly that's you know Arabian so you know based on Arabian culture I mean you can see the context here that the attire the Kuzites are uh, Turkic and or Mongolian so it's kind of you know as you can see here they are uh, steppe tribes used that used to live in a nomadic lifestyle but have recently settled in the eastern frontier of the empire and are slowly transitioning into an agrarian society with permanent town centers which is a lot of what happened to uh, many of these uh, Turkic tribes that we know from history then you have the Batanians and I 
think they're Celtics, uh, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, so if you check on Wikipedia, you will see um, there's a, basically a breakdown of these different cultures and what their kind of inspirations are. So I'm personally going to play as uh, um, the Kuzites, okay? And uh, for mainly for the reason that I'm really interested in step history and step culture. So that's going to be uh, a nice kind of, uh, you know, game to play. But I think they're all pretty interesting. And let's check out the perks before I jump in. The Vlanians are, uh, get 20% more upgrade XP to troops from battles. Uh, that's, that's great. Story gains get 20 less, 20% 20 less speed penalty from snow. Uh, I haven't really played in the snow areas that much. Empire, 20% construction speed bonus to town projects, wall repairs, and siege engines. I haven't even gotten to the point of actually building that. That's how early on in the game I was in the last campaign. The Asserai, well, caravans are 30% cheaper to build, 10% less trade penalty. I actually built a, um, a caravan in, in my previous game and I didn't see how it basically, how much money it yielded for me. So I might go back and check that out to see if it's worth it. The Kuzites have 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on campaign map. Which I'll probably be needing, and then the battalions get 10% less speed penalty to parties in uh, or uh, yeah in the forest, right? So we're gonna we're gonna play as Kuzites, right? So now you also build your character. I'm just gonna use a kind of generic build, see what you know you get. Um, I'm I don't want the person to be too tall. Perhaps maybe that's kind of appropriate height, or no, maybe a little bit taller. And that I don't really care about the kind of uh, you know physical features or whatever, um, but you do start with a kind of generic, uh, uh, I think, uh, generic look for each culture. I think that's what it is. So um, maybe maybe just facial hair because I, I you know I think facial hair is pretty cool, but other than that, I don't think you know I'm gonna really. Uh, spend too much time kind of uh, uh, you know building on that so okay so we got the facial hair and the rest is just maybe the voice pitch let's see so you can Fall test that line! out Make a no this is kind of I, I like the the, the deeper one okay uh, so maybe the third one and so next now so we get into the family so again we don't really care about the, 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 the physical features so now we choose our family right you were born into a family of and then the choices you get will affect the stats here and there are a lot of stats in this game that are important to keep an eye out on because these stats will then give you certain perks so Anoyan's kinsfolk, uh, your family were the trusted kinsfolk of a Khuzite Noyan and shared his meals in the chieftain's yurt. Your father assisted his chief in running the affairs of the clan and fought in the core of armored lancers in the center of the Khuzite battle line. Um, what, what do you get? Ten, 10 skilled level and one focus point to riding and pole arm attribute point to endurance. Um, let's see, merchants, you get social skills such as charm, leadership and trade those are you know especially leadership is is important oh you don't get anything for leadership you don't but uh, leadership is good for recruitment right if you want to recruit people so uh they adjusted quickly to their new masters keeping okay so let's check out here the uh, tribes people 10 skill level and one focus point to bow and riding one attribute to control I'm not a really good uh, bow, uh, bowman here, and uh, kind of tried it out. I suck at it, but I, you know, I'm gonna try to learn, right? There's also throwing. You can throw javelins. So this is if you're a farmer, that would be good. You get the shamans, who are good on the intelligence side, and um, basically you got medicine here, engineering and stewardship. Uh, you got social here. You get charm. You can make people good guess at people's motivations and kinds. Of arguments to which they'll respond okay that might be good for interaction with other characters what about nomads uh, nomads are good 10 skill level and one focus point to scouting and riding one attribute point to cunning um, 
I do like this. I do like the uh, maybe the Noyan one. Um, I will focus on that because you know we're gonna be riding a lot. We're step people at the end of the day. So let's move on. Okay, and now choose your early childhood. As you were noted for, as a child you were noted for, and then again, the things that, the, 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 what you choose here is going to directly affect the stats that you have, and everything has a bearing on, on, on the gameplay, actually. So let's see, your leadership skill. Um, hmm, let's see. 10 skill level and 1 focus point to leadership and tactics, 1 attribute point to cunning. So you get that your brawn 10 skill uh and one focus point on two-handed and throwing what about your attention to detail okay so you get you get something here you get 10 skill level and one focus point to athletics and one handed uh one attribute to control i like playing one-handed though and then i i use a shield in the other hand uh, so I might go for attention to detail, which will give me endurance uh, as well. But let's see, your aptitude for numbers. Uh, that's good for engineering, which you know you're going to use for shields. Do I want to become a, a merchant? I might use that, but I, again, I, I like having really kind of strong martial skills on the battlefield. Your way with people, it's obviously you're going to get a leadership and charm. And obviously you can upgrade these later on. So it's not like you're just committed to these to these skills. What about your skill with horses? Okay, so you do get medicine here. Let's perhaps, you know, focus on my attention to detail. Which gives me athletic and, you know, athletics, physical fitness, speed and balance. Or my brawn. Throwing. Hmm, it's a tough one, but I do like to play with a sword, right? With a with a one-handed sword. Like a all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also herded the sheep. So what does that give us? That gives us throwing ten. Okay, and one focus point to athletics and throwing. One attribute point to control. Mm. Uh, worked in the village smithy to two-handed and smithing repaired projects gathered herbs in the wild let's see no gathered herd herds herbs in the wild um so one focus point to medicine and scouting one point to endurance um what about hunted small game we might use the bow what about sold produce at the market trade so that that makes you good but worked in the village smithy maybe i might need some trade skills too i might go on a trading uh campaign right as a youngster growing up in calradia which is the fictional world that this uh whole realm is set in war was never too far away you were a chieftain's servant okay your family arranged you to accompany a chieftain of your people you were not given major responsibilities okay so one focus point to steward and tactics. Um, let's see, trained with the cavalry. I wonder if this is going to give me, um, okay, so you get more to the pole arm. That might be good, trained with the cavalry. Street guard at the garrison, with the garrisons. So you get one point to bow and engineering and one attribute point to intelligence. Let's see. I thought our okay. All right. So what about ro road with the scouts? So you get more for horseman skills, and then you get the bow. Trained with the infantry, you get again here more one-handed, and then more pole arm, and or join the skirmishers. So one-handed, and then throwing. I kind of like the idea of riding with the scouts okay although it's going to be tough because again i'm not an excellent bowman but i might need that you defeated okay so before you set out for a life of adventure your biggest achievement was you defeated an enemy in battle you led a successful manhunt so let's see the first one oh it gives you uh more one-handed and then 
two-handed. You led a successful manhunt. Uh, no, you invested some money in the land. So that gives you smithing. You hunted a dangerous animal. Uh, gives you more bow skills and then also crossbow. You had a famous escapade in town. Uh, no, you get roguery here. You treated people well. Huh. I don't want to treat anyone well here. This is a kind of a rugged world. So maybe I defeated an enemy in battle. What about leading a successful manhunt? You get tactics here. Your judgment of how troops will perform in contact. Uh, this allows you to make a good prediction of when an unorthodox tactic will work and when it won't. What about this? Leadership, this ability to inspire. You can fill individuals with confidence and stir up enthusiasm and courage in larger groups. Uh, oh boy, so many tough choices to make. But um, you know what? We will stick to you. Ha you defeated an enemy in battle. So, like many families in Calradia, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, and brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was you've, you'd heard was safer. But you did not make it. Along the way, the at the inn, the inn at which you were staying, was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain, and your two youngest siblings seized. But you and your brother survived because you subdued a raider. Okay, look what we get here. More one-handed, and then athletics. You drove them off with arrows. Uh, you rode off on a fast horse. You tricked the raiders. <laughs> so you get tactics here in roguery. What does roguery give you? Experience with the darker side of human life. You can tell when a guard wants a bribe, you know how to intimidate someone, and you have a good sense of what you can and can't get away with. And then you organize the travelers to break out. Let's see. Mm, leadership and charm. Uh, we might need that. We might need leadership for recruitment because we're going to recruit a band. So, uh, okay, so what else is there? Asugan, maybe Ochon. Okay, so this is the name of the character. We'll just call him Ochon. We're going to move on, and this is where we're going to try to make it more realistic. Uh, so uh, I want to make everything realistic, which is actually pretty tough, right? It's uh, at least for me, given that I'm a beginner at this game. So I'm going to keep combat to normal. I want to see what's below that there's challenging. Oh, normal is the lowest. Wait, I think normal is in between challenging and veteran. We're definitely not going to play veteran. Uh, Enable death in battle. Oh, so if choose if heroes are able to die on the battlefield. Uh, that feature, given that I'm new, I'm going to avoid that because I'm going to recruit heroes and if they start dying, it's going to be really costly on me. Although in, a, in the next campaign, perhaps I would try that out, but I'm going to avoid that for now. So um, uh, I'm going to start the campaign without further ado and see where this takes us. So you begin, brother. It's been three days now. We've been tracking these those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue Jatu and Alte? Are we up for a fight? So the thing is now, you um, basically uh, are on the manhunt for your, for your siblings. Uh, so I have the option here of st sticking around and kind of uh, playing the tutorial, which I don't need to. Uh, but I highly recommend if you're new to this game, try it out because it's gonna it's gonna help you kind of with the uh, with the basics of combat, right? So I'm going to uh, we have no time to lose. We can do more if we split up. So we're skipping the tutorial. Are you sure about that? And then you're gonna say yes. Time is of the essence, or that's what I'm gonna say at least. All right, then let us split up and look for the little ones separately. I'll send you a word if I find them before you do. One other thing, brother. We want people to take us seriously. We may be leading men into battle soon. Let's give our family a name and a banner, like the nobles do. Okay, so this is where we choose a banner. And, uh, well, actually, no, not yet. 
but you're going to choose a banner, I think. A few hours after you leave the training ground, you come across a wounded man lying under a tree. You share your water with him and try to dress his wounds as best as you can. He tells you he is a traveling doctor. To thank you for your help, he hands you a small bronze artifact, which he says was once given to him in payment by a warrior who said only that it was related to Nerezzi's folly. He suspects it might be of great value. You resolve to find out more. What is my family name? Uh, select your family name. Ilkhanids, let's say, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Picking something from history. So this is our new family. Oh yes, we do pick the banner here. This is pretty exciting stuff. It's really this type of customization makes it feel more, uh, you know, personable, right? So we're gonna pick something that seems kind of step-like. Um, Oh, here, maybe, or this. All right, so I'm just gonna stick to this. I think this is actually, uh, it might be the emblem that you see on the Crimean Tatar flag. I'm not sure if that's correct, but in any case, it's, uh, you know, I'm trying to kind of aim for historical accuracy. Or given that we're a step tribe, what about this actually? Uh, you know, there. Are, this is kind of uh, very common for such tribes. So, uh, red, what color should I go for? I like black and gold. It's kind of nice. So, uh, yeah, I might, might stick to that. So, it gives it a little bit something more kind of uh, powerful. But let's see, maybe... No. No, 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 no. no. I'm going to stick to... To, to black for the uh, for the uh, flag color, so we're done. So we, what we do now is basically we will check our uh, you know our 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 missions right now. Our quests. What active quests do we have? These are uh, important. So there are two. There's th this one that I just got. Investigate Nerezzi's folly. As you explore Cal Calradia, you can learn more about your artifacts and its importance by asking any lord or lady about the empire's recent history. So I can now go and increase my, my, my money, but to do so, I need to grow my party to 20 men, reach clan tier 1, and so I need 50 renown to get to that, and hire one companion. So I begin my mission. So I'm going to start off as, as a nobody, basically, and try to expand uh, so let's see here. The lands around Tevia are s s owned mostly by Faron, an archon, an archon of the Southern Empire. The village is of average wealth. Humans and animals alike look well fed. Villagers bu busily attend to the tasks of the season. So um, I need to look around to see if I can actually recruit people. So as you can see here, there are two imperial recruits whom I will employ in my in my band. Okay. So, uh, and I will see, f for example, if anyone here can give me a mission, which I don't think I can get because um, usually there's a kind of exclamation mark icon, but just let us see. So this is now I entered the village and I'm going to introduce myself. I am Patris. I own land around here. I speak for many of the people in this village. It is good to meet you. Remember, there is no currency. In this world more valuable than the weight of your words so speak truthfully with me and i shall do the same i have a quick question never mind i have nothing to tell him so we have nothing to do in this town so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna exit and go elsewhere right so uh leave at least so we recruited two people so i have the option of going in this direction to segora okay and i think that's what i'm gonna do well i've already started that Hopefully we won't get stopped by any bandits on the way there. And we're going to go recruit more people. So there's no one I can recruit because I don't have the high enough relation to acquire this troop with this person. The relation is minus one. Let's see. I do have an exclamation mark with this guy, Zostios of Segora. And he might have a job for me. So now we're entering. We're going to have to do side missions. I'm sorry. I don't think I know you. I am Okan, who are you? 
I am Zostios, I own land around here, I speak for many of the people in this village. They all do! <laughs> I've heard you may need some help with a problem. Yes, it's a good problem to have though. As you know, I deal with sh in sheep. Production this year has been very good and we can no longer make a profit on the local market. I cannot however put together a caravan to sell it elsewhere, so I propose a very simple deal. Uh, you sell me goods at a discount. That could work if you have the money, but if you don't, I'm willing to take a chance on you. I reckon for 6 loads of sheep, you can probably find a market nearby where buyers will pay you a total of 384 uh, gold. Here's my offer. I loan you the product, you sell it at whatever price you like and bring me back 384 dinars. I have little doubt you can find a market where you can get a better price than this and make a profit. One of my companions can do that. Excellent. Just make sure he's well guarded. Good. Goods attract bandits as I'm sure you know. I suppose 4 well armed men will be enough. The thing is I don't have a companion. I'll take up on that. I sell. I shall. I sell. I sell. Find a. It should be. I shall find a market for your sheep. Okay. So I took on that job. Um. I would rather be your middleman on this matter. I need to keep my money. You can have your men load up sheep's already. So we're gonna do this uh, job for this uh, local uh, peasant noble, I guess, or whatever he is. And so we move to another village and see, actually let's see if there's an expiry date for this. Yeah, there's 30 days for this art of trade. So Z Zostos of Sar Sagora from Southern Empire asks you to sell his goods for, for him for at least 64 gold per load and return to him. He told you that any profit would make above the price is yours to keep. So if I get an ex excessive amount, or I can keep the sheep, who knows, I might need them for food. Uh, but in any case, let's uh, move to the next village and see what we can get here. We need to recruit, right? Oh, we, we almost got caught by these uh, looters. Nothing to recruit or nobody to recruit here. Uh, what if I can... Let's see if I can sell the products. Can I sell the sheep here? I think maybe if I go to the you know a, a major town, it might be better. Let me see. I'm going to leave and then I'm going to go to Lycaron here and see what I can get for these sheep. Let's see. Recruit troops. There's nobody to recruit. Um, but what if we sell? Trade. See? The sheep are much uh, more expensive. And so I'm going to sell them all. Okay. So... Oops, pardon me. What is... Okay, so... Basically, yeah. So I'm now selling them to... Um, the... Uh, the local merchants here. And... Uh, I think he said 36 per sheep. I'm not sure. So if I go back... And... and no, you know what? No, I think he said... He wanted me to buy them for... 300 and something. I'm gonna keep them on me and I might actually eat them if I need them. I might have to slaughter them so this is probably gonna put me in a uh, poor situation with that kind of uh, local peasant noble but uh, in any case it doesn't really matter so I got myself some food and um, I can't find anybody right now to recruit. So recruit troops still nothing. Uh, Maybe if I wait around a little bit. And I, as you can see here, my daily gold change is minus four. I'm paying my troops, right? Or the, the two men that I have with me right now. So we wait, we wait, we wait. And then perhaps there will be new recruits coming. You see the looters around me right now are quite dangerous, right? If these guys can manage to stop me, they can basically destroy me. So is there anyone to recruit? Yes, now we got two new recruits. We're done here, and we're probably... I want to see what this guy wants. Can I deliver the herd to Sir, Seronia? Let's see. I am Okan, and who are you? I am Menaklis. I own land around here. I speak for many of the people of this village. Oh, again. So this guy has a problem, too. Some of the families in this village need to raise a bit of money. They put together a herd of 10 Midland Palfrey in Seronia, but with all the banditry on the roads, they can't drive it there on their own. We're not merchants or landowners. We can't afford any losses. Tell me how I can help. If, we're, if you're going to the direction of Seronia, you can perhaps take our herd there to row the carpenter. Some villagers will come along as well to help you drive the animals. 
Let's see. Okay, we can do that. I promise if you or your men manage to deliver the herd safely, I will pay you 400 gold. So what do you say? Don't worry, I will deliver your 10 Midland Midlands Palfrey personally to Ro the Cal Carpenter in Seronia. So we're going to do it. So basically, you're kind of like for hire, right? That's what you do. That's your job. You're, you know, you get paid per, per, per deed. And so we're going to actually go to Seronia and, and, uh, and do that for him, which is, which I'm going to be able to find on the map here. So, uh, where is it? Bro, the carpenter, uh, my necklace of, Can of Canterion, the headman of Canterion has asked you to deliver 10 mi of Midland Palfrey to row the carpenter in Seronia. Where is that? So we're going to track it. Okay. And then this is where Ro the Carpenter is. She is a also an influential merchant. So more on the characters and their traits, uh, you know, will be said later on as I kind of build through this campaign. So as you can see here, you can always see their stats when you hover over their, their icons. So now I'm tracking Segora and it's right here. It's not far away. It's actually right here. It's the village I came from, in fact. Uh, recruit troops, nothing. And we're gonna go. We're gonna go to um, Segora. But first, let me save. Right, saving is uh, probably important here. Um, what did I say my name was? Ocon. All right. So we're gonna save, and then we're gonna basically go and uh, deliver the uh, the herd here. So that was that was easy. And. Uh, Wait, what? There's, I think there's, hold on. Whoops, wrong town. That was, we were tracking the wrong town. We were basically, Segora is another town that, the name's here. Yeah, I was like, okay, there's no way. There is Seronia. Wow, that was a very, uh, um, you know, uh, rookie mistake there but in any case we're making our way there I was like there's no way that it would be this quick and this simple no way this game offers you quite the bit of challenge so we're gonna hire people on the way there because you know we don't want any raiders attacking us so the thing is looters when they see you um, they typically uh, uh, you know uh, when they see you they typically weigh and, and kind of evaluate the situation if you're if you're not many, they will attack you. So uh, it's good to go uh, as a band, right? So recruit troops as a larger band, that is. So more Imperial recruits. And, uh, you know, we're getting close to having, uh, you know, 20. And the more uh, the more experience they gain, the more you can actually... Let's see if we can attack these, uh, these looters here. They're running away from us. And it says that the power level here is in our favor I'm probably gonna attempt a battle so why not you can take them as prisoners so let's save and if I kind of completely butcher this I might come back uh, but uh, you know we need to gain uh, battle experience as well so I can send my troops and they can do the battle for me but I'm gonna go and you know and try this myself so all right, you see, like we're really a band of nothing right now. And if you press F1 here, you get kind of commands. Um, I'm not gonna play around with that too much right now. I don't Forward! have many. Oh no, sorry. Well, they're they're attacking. In fact, uh, I should have not done that. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, so they're they're we lost one guy already. This is the kind of noob uh, in me here. Okay, so I, I'm slaughtering a bunch of them too, but we lost so many men. That was so pointless, uh, um, you know. And uh, okay, so this guy's gonna die. I actually massacred a few of them. Uh, okay, so that was terribly executed. I accidentally sent my men into a kind of uh, uh, a quick. Uh, attack but uh, I made them charge perhaps I could have been a little bit more attentive to the 
you know, to the tactic. So we only lost actually two men, only two of them died, and then six of them actually upgraded. So that's good. I think that war was necessary. I think uh, the looters, all of them died actually. So, um, yeah, so, and then they killed five of ours. So, let's see what's going to happen here. So we gain renown and morale, so we need 50 more renown to upgrade to a, um, to, to a, uh, for, uh, uh, our clan tier. And we just got 1.3 renown, that's not bad. And we got ourselves loot here, so I'm going to take it all. You can just press here and get it all. Yeah, I can maybe sell some of that on the market. And uh, so that's done. And then you're going to be prompted to another screen, you'll see. Or no. Uh, sometimes when uh, these people die, they basically... Uh, or when you win a battle, you, you get the option of keeping them as prisoners. Or you get the option of taking them on in your in your band. So, uh, uh, or, or uh, you know, I think, yeah. So I, I couldn't even take any prisoners because we killed them all. But let's check out our party here. Uh, see, now I can upgrade some of these guys. So I'm going to upgrade two of them to um, Imperial Infantrymen, and then two of them to uh, Imperial Archers, and then one more, or actually two more to Infantrymen. So you see here, our army is upgrading. We paid 90 gold, but now we have a more sophisticated army than when we first started out, or a band, let's just say, because an army is too much of an overstatement here. Um, we're gonna recruit more people here and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell some of the loot that we took and but actually in fact I might uh, no in fact I might not sell anything until I get to Seronia because in larger towns uh, yeah so in, in in those towns you you sell for more right so I'm just gonna get recruits here recruit people more you know and as I obviously recruit more, uh, the cost of keeping my band together is going to be uh, larger. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, what else? Recruit. Let's see. We can get two more guys on, uh, on our team here. We're, so we're 13. Um, and then two, two of our, our men are injured. I'm going to avoid these looters because they're more numerous than us. So, uh, But you see here how things are changing. And now look at this. The daily gold change is minus 29 now. So let's sell, right? Let's trade here. Let's sell some of the stuff that we got on the battlefield. I don't need this pitchfork. Um, I don't need this bent wooden hammer. I don't need this. Although you might need keep some things. I think, I'm not sure if you, it's like other RPG games where you can disassemble uh, some of the loots and then turn it, use it for different products. But right now I'm, I don't mind just selling this kind of, you know, uh, lesser loot right so uh, we're uh, basically done so we get 111 ducats off of that and let's go see Ro we got her the uh, the sheep right so okay so I don't know you I suppose you should tell me your name I am Okan and who are you I am Ro a merchant here in Seronia I own a wood workshop here Okay, I know your name, I hear you recently caught some bandits around here. Well, as a merchant, I appreciate that it will make the road safer. Hopefully, other desperate men will be deterred from going into a life of crime and villainy. So, uh, about the tasks, okay, Menaclis of Cantarion gave me. Here you go. Yes, sir, a mutual friend, Menaclis of Cantarion, sent word to us. He told us to expect you with 10 head of his midline palfrey. So, have you brought them? Yes. So now I get 400 duc uh, ducats or gold and the other guy, the merchant that sent me ha has a better uh, view of me now. His relation with me is good. So uh, I think she may need uh, me to help her with a job. So let's see. Okan. So they, when you do, when you perform duties for characters, they, they, uh, their rel your relation with them increases. Uh, I, I heard that you may have a problem with that needs to be resolved. And so she tells us that things have gotten a lot worse recently with the brigands on the roads around town. My caravans get looted as soon as they're out of sight of the gates. Go on. I'm of a mind to send out a new caravan, but I fear it will be plundered before it can turn a profit. So I'm looking for some good fighters who can escort it until it finds its footings and visits 
A couple of settlements. Any other way? No. I'll escort the caravan myself. Thank you. So, let's leave. And I obtained uh, charm skills uh, with that. So, uh, let me just save again because we did make some progress. So our main party wages is indicated here, minus 28. That's not bad. So again, we will uh, save here. And then let's see, recruit troops. Why not, right? So how much, okay, we're expected to pay minus, we're expected to pay 34. But I wanna leave with a kind of strong band, right? So let's see. That's the that's the caravan we're we're helping out, and as you can see here, uh, they're ahead of us, and we continue to follow them. We shouldn't abandon them or leave them at all, because if we do, then you have these annoying looters that will come and and join, right? So, kind of pushing them out of the way, and when they see you as a large number, they actually move in a different direction. So now the combined force that I have with this merchant caravan can is. If you is basically 22, so uh, we have 22 people in this in this band, so that's why these looters are not uh, you know coming anywhere near. And I think we're gonna make a good sum off of this. I I really like this kind of concept of you know. Starting as a nobody basically and building a name in this realm and again like in my case in the last time I just had a band of 20 people and uh, you know I, I saw the significant progress, but basically you essentially can become I think you can become a king or some sort of sovereign You can even take a legitimate. I think an illegitimate uh, route two of just basically attacking uh, Caravans and everything and becoming a kind of brigand so we'll see, we'll see where kind of direction uh, we'll go for. Uh, for now, I kind of like this, uh, you know, just kind of simplicity and not really having to worry about that. I just want to make a bit of money and increase my, my bands. And then I don't know if I'm going to become, you know, kind of a, a good figure or not. But for the time being, there's no kind of major game plan here. Whoops. Okay, so they changed directions and I'm not wonder why okay so it could be because there's actually looters around okay, sometimes that's the thing when the merchants see that they'll they'll move in a different direction so as you can see I don't know if you noticed but we were at 13 and now we're at 14 that's because two of our injured we have two injured band members and one of them I think uh, is, is, is back to his uh, regular health I decided for the sheep that I'm actually gonna keep them with the other guy instead of selling them because I need uh, food supplies and you see here expected changes is minus 0.75 a day uh, given the kind of increasing band here so uh, and the sheep contribute to that so I'm gonna keep that because we're not really good on supplies and the more that our bands increase the more that we'll need food Okay, so you can see looters are everywhere in this game. And I think they sense our presence. Are they coming for us is the question. They might be, but, uh, or not. Oh no, they're moving up the mountains. And this game, mind you, is a, is a, is pretty much a, you know, a, a simulator. So you're, um, you, you're gonna basically uh, expect you should expect difficult combat you know it's not kind of like uh, uh, those uh, typical um, you know uh, kind of uh, medieval or whatever sword fighting games where you no know, you know you take a, one critical or two critical hits and you're done so uh, I like the attention to detail I like the stats and all of that, you know, these kind of RPG and strategy elements brought into one makes it such a, such a fascinating concept. You know, 
and uh, again, I haven't played enough to, to give a full assessment of the game, but so far it's it's very satisfactory, and I and I'm uh, you know completely um, mesmerized by it. So we'll see where it's gonna go. Maybe can we recruit more troops? Yeah, no, why not add more people? You know. All right, so leave. Continue with the merchants. So they might take us to places we never intended to go. As you can see here, we're you know traveling. At one point, we were in Segora, <laughs> and you know, and now we're we're moving in different parts of the realm. So this is the full map, by the way. And these are the steppe lands here. This is where we're originally from. You know, my uh, in terms of uh, you know my my in-game character. So he's a Kuzite, and that's where they're inhabiting. And so you're going to encounter different cultures as you move around the kingdom. All right, I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Okay, so we better whoops. We better make a lot of money off of this because this was this was a whole a really costly process, right? So, let's see. the looters are moving around everywhere and you're gonna start seeing then different factions fighting against each other there's gonna be so uh, it's kind of um, f faction wars um, and you're gonna see different city cities being laid siege you know they're under siege so it's gonna be quite the quite the the, the experience you, you're gonna see like all the warfare that's going on in the region so uh, have they arrived to their final destination Okay, so they're in there and they, they did perform some trade. Let's see if we can hire someone in the meantime. No, no one we can hire here. What if we can trade something? It's nothing. Oh, wow. The sheep here cost much more. So we would have been able to... Let's see, if we were trading all the sheep, we would have made 439. But I'm going to keep the sheep because I'm going to use them for, for slaughter, right? And then I'm going to use them for, for food supplies later on. Alright, so as you can see that caravan is also increasing in terms of numbers. I might cut out some content if it gets too tedious. Um, you're about to lose sight of the caravan. We're literally carry on, okay? So we, how are we losing sight? We're right there. So there's also stats affect the sight, your sight on the campaign map, what you can see around you, right? So. Okay, so wow, we received 1800 gold from that. That was completely worth it. And let's see if we can recruit troops. No one to be recruited here. Uh, but let's see what Tharos the Brewer wants, right? So he wants us to escort a, a merchant caravan. I'm honestly liking this, uh, these missions because, you know, if they can give us this much money, why, why not, right? So, uh, I don't know you. I suppose you should tell me your name. I am Okan and who are you? Okay. Let's see. Alright. Things have gotten a lot worse recently with the brigands on the roads around town. My caravans get looted as soon as they're out of sight of the gates. Go on. Okay, so it's the same concept. I'll escort the caravan myself. So you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to end this episode here. Because it's going to get tedious. It's going to be kind of repetitive. It's the same concept. I'm going to cut out superfluous content. And just give you... Um, 
basic uh, you know idea so uh, you know I'm gonna try not to be too repetitive and introduce new content in every episode so I'm gonna you know end it here do the mission and then come back when there's some kind of something more fruitful happening right so uh, uh, thank you for watching uh, everyone and thank you for your support I'm gonna be uh, back with more content as usual uh, please don't forget to subscribe when you whenever you get the chance uh, and um, you know help this channel grow and then uh, I'm gonna throw uh, more content back at you uh, so I want to thank everyone for their support and their suggestions and I'm gonna keep this going and hopefully it can grow into a uh, you know a, um, a a good channel eventually the one that has you know a, a variety of content all right so uh, I'm gonna end it here thank you so much and have a great day